I talked to you last week on holy habits, holy habits. And I could tell I struck a, struck a nerve, especially at the end of service last week, when I, I started talking on some practical things. And it concerned me. It really did. Because people aren't thinking about the future. They're living in the here and now. And the problem without thinking about the future is this. You're setting yourself up for long-term failure. And you're setting yourself up to keep poverty on your children from generations to come. I don't think I'd get too many shouts there. I'm not giving investment advice because I don't want to get sued. Amen? <laughs> what I'm telling you this, though, is you should pray about what the Lord would have you do. You get paid. This is my tithe. This is my offering. But this is what I'm investing, too. Be it Roth IRAs, IRAs, shares of stocks, whatever you feel led to do. It's never been easier. I said it's never been easier. They have apps out there like Acorns. My Lord, you could set it to your card and it rounds up five cents on a dollar and invest it for you. I know this isn't stuff talked about in the church, but it should be. Because generations after you, if the Lord should tarry, people shouldn't have to struggle. People shouldn't have to struggle because you didn't think about the future. And I, I, honest to God, I couldn't pastor this church without being straightforward with people and telling people the truth. Yeah. I hate more than anything, I hate seeing people struggle. I hate, I, I, you know why? Because it glorifies the devil. Yeah. I said it glorifies the devil. Poverty literally glorifies the devil. The thief comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. Jesus said I might, that I have come, you might have life, life more abundantly. John chapter 10 and verse 10. But I don't like seeing anybody struggle physically. Physically. That's why I pray for the sick. Actually, I don't pray for them. We just command them to be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. We've had some wonderful miracles this week. My God. Blind eyes wide open. Deaf ears. A lady brother, she was crippled the other night from a car accident. One leg shorter than the other. Boy, it sounded like somebody, uh, the kids have one of them whip things. Makes that noise. She got prayed for it, right? Snapped straight up. Took off doing laps around the place. Totally healed by the power of God. And then sat down in the front row because we were, you know, on TV in 200 nations. Took her shoes off. The leg came right back out to where the other one was. I mean, just all week long, signs, wonders, miracles. That's why I'm so strong on this stuff. But I don't like seeing anybody struggle in any area of their life. Spiritually, hello. But also, physically, relationally, emotionally, or financially. Because I believe, just as the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 3, that Jesus redeemed us from all the curse of the law. Amen. All of it. Every last bit of it. I don't believe you have to struggle your whole life here on earth. Yeah, Jesus said when he taught us how to pray, that my will would be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. Any sick people in heaven? No. Any broke people in heaven? No. I rest my case. There ain't no trouble in heaven. Trouble is in hell. And someday it's going to get thrown into the lake of fire. That's a whole different. So we're talking on holy habits last week. Hit on something tonight a little bit on that too. But also there's practical things we can do daily. Hello. That make a difference over the long term. I told you, if you go to the gym once and work out like a maniac, you're not going to look any different when you leave than when you came. But if you do that for a couple of years straight, things are going to begin to change. Yeah. Matt, things begin to change. It's like, you know, the beginning of the year, everybody goes to the gym for two weeks, if that. And I'm grateful it's only two weeks. Right, Debbie? <laughs> I'm over there. Lord, send them somewhere else in Jesus' name. <laughs> oh, Lord, send them to Green Ridge in Jesus' name. <laughs> Pittston, Pocono, anywhere but here. Amen. But it, we talked about this. I believe consistency breeds victory. Consistency breeds victory. Amen. While I started a business, I'm not rich. No. But if you consistently work at the business and expand and build, come on. I hear people say all the time, well, I was just born on the wrong side of tracks, the wrong side of spook.
We were just, we were just singing we're a child of God a minute ago, but now it, it came to practical us having to do something. We got quiet. Oh, man. See? I'm a child of God. God, so yeah, start that business. Oh, Lord, I'm born on the wrong side of track. God, I don't have the time. I just can't do that. God, I don't have that. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. You're just shouting you're a child of God. Yeah. I didn't think I'd get too many amens tonight. Choking every religious devil in the place. Whew. That has kept people under for far too long. And I've had enough of it. Maybe it's just I've been hanging out with my people this week, but I'm all kinds of true. Ready to give a foam finger to the devil. Amen. Amen. <laughs> From the ball games, you know, the big foam finger. Amen. <laughs> In fact, I pray my life is one big foam finger to the devil. I really do. I don't care who I make. Honest to God, I've never cared less in my life. I really haven't. All I care about, honest to God, is pleasing God. Amen. I really could care less what anybody thinks, anybody says. Sometimes I even put stuff on social media just to tick people off. <laughs> Did that earlier today. Amen. Could care less. All I want to care about is pleasing God. I don't care what anybody has to say. Honest to God. I'm just at a point in my faith where I just want to be in God's presence. And I just want to be used of God. And I really could care less who thinks what about it, who comes, who goes. Could care, not give one. Amen. I really just want to be used of God mightily. And I want to see God touch people. And I want to see God change people's lives. And the truth is, sometimes you got to deal with the man in the mirror. And you're blaming God for things when God already gave you the victory over something. Or God already gave you the ability to do something. Or if he hasn't yet, he will. He's already put something on the inside of you. And you keep yourself stuck in the same place and make excuses and then you blame God for things that he gave you power over. This is America. You're not in some depraved third world nation. Even including the regime that's in there now. Amen. <laughs> I'm tired. I don't, you have no idea what's going to come out of this mouth tonight. <laughs> this is the land of opportunity. The only excuse you have is yourself. Yeah. Making excuses for why you can't do that, why you can't build that, why you can't have that family. How about this one? Why you can't get to church? Oh, well, I was going somewhere with this one. I heard people say, Brother, I'd like to be there tonight, but it's raining outside. You live in northeastern Pennsylvania, where there's like 50 days a year of sunshine, maybe. They said flash floods. Where? There's not even a puddle out there. Well, brother, we just need to use caution and stay home. Stay home. <laughs> the same people to help, you know. No, I better not. I'll get kicked off streaming, I'm sure. <laughs> same people hiding in their basement still since 2020. Same people that told me in 2020, oh, you're reckless. No, I'm not. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Never was afraid of a virus. Never will be. Right. Somebody said to me, what if you die? I'll go to heaven. But I won't because I got too much work to do yet on this side. I know what God's called me to do, so I'm not going to die from a darn virus. Amen. Or any other stupid thing. Amen. Neither are you. Amen. Same people. Still driving around in their car by themselves with gloves and a mask on. <laughs> Who are you going to infect? Yourself? <laughs> You're right. Don't tell me I'm the only one who sees these people. I see them every day. I saw a guy in, in Peckville two weeks ago on a motorcycle with a mask on. Hope it doesn't cut off too much oxygen in the brain, amen? That's not going to go well. Tell me I'm wrong. Oh, brother, you just need to use caution. <laughs> I like to come to Thrive. But, don't, amen. <laughs> it gets narc at nighttime. How old are you, Uncle Brian? How old are you? 94. How? 94. Right. You know it gets dark at nighttime? You should probably be hiding in your basement wearing three masks and gloves, looking for a 17th shot from Dr. Fauci. 
who's lied about everything else. Why? Because he has an antichrist spirit. That's why. Oh, I'm just going to go for it. I'm already out on this limb. The same people that are pushing crap on you like that are the same ones that are now pushing gender reassignment for children. And the same ones that are pushing to have the Israelite children thrown out of their land, too. Oh, that's Republican. No, there's bad Republicans and bad Democrats. It's called an antichrist spirit. How do I combat those things? By having holy habits. By having holy habits. Now, if you follow Dr. Fauci, good luck. Amen. <laughs> I'm not picking on you. I'm just tired, and this is how I am. <laughs> Fauci, ouchie. Amen. But I'd like to tell you this. You survived. I know they said the whole world was going to end. It's still spinning. Come on. Those of you still hiding in the basement, we're in 2023. Amen. It's just three years later. It's time to come out of the basement. Amen. The same people I see. There's people that still haven't come back to church, you know. But yet they go to Walmart. Oh, brother, I'd like to go to church, but I'm afraid I'm going to catch something. What, like faith? A dose of the Holy Ghost? Smack some freaking sense back into you again? Well, brother, you know, as people could get me sick at church. You walk around Walmart. Walmart was bad before COVID. I, I just don't want to get sick, you know. Let me help you. You're not going to get sick in God's house. This is, hear me, this is God's property. It's a place full of faith and only the Holy Ghost. I'll tell you what, if you get sick, I'll lay hands on you. Yeah. Ask her. I prayed for somebody on a ventilator, didn't I? Right at the height of that thing? And they totally turned their situation around. They told her there's a couple hours to live. Come up out of that thing, healthy and whole. She was what, in her 30s? Uh, a little bit older than that, but... Well, we see it by faith, amen. <laughs> but I, I, didn't I stand right here where the back porch used to be? And I said, you foul devil. Who in the Hades do you think you are? I said, that's a mother with young children. I bind that foul spirit, didn't we? And I said, while she's on that ventilator, she's coming off today in Jesus' mighty name. It's the height of this thing. Like when we had to have tape over the windows and state police knocking on the door. What are you doing in there? Eating breakfast. Amen. I hope you're six feet apart. No, we're in here hugging each other. Amen. Want a hug? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How I got on this, I have no idea. <laughs> Spend a little time in West Virginia and you just, it all comes out. Amen. No, I'll tell you this. You come to a church, hear me. You get sick, which you won't, but you'll have power to overcome it. Amen. I said, you'll have power to overcome it. How many people I've laid hands on with stage four cancer have no cancer in their body today? You know how many people with diabetes I've laid hands on have no diabetes? There's a man that comes to Peckville. I laid hands on him at the Hartford Fair. It would be five years ago this summer. On dialysis. Bad. And I told him at the fair in that cow barn. Hey, Amen. Felt right at home. They're doing a 4-H auction. I was just looking for some steak. Hey, Amen. Them cows are walking by. I said, hey, T-Bone. Hey, Amen. <laughs> I was naming them as they're going by in faith, amen? <laughs> Probably no PETA people here tonight either. <laughs> My friend. And I laid hands on him. I said, I believe right here in this cow barn that God will go to his spare parts in heaven warehouse. It's bigger than the Naples. And I've sent an angel down aisle 37, base 6, and God's going to slap two brand new kidneys in you right in the middle of this cow barn. Now, they probably thought I was crazy, but it's Hartford. Amen? Anything goes. <laughs> well, this will be five years this summer. He totally came off dialysis. Next time he went to the doctor, he said, look like he's got two brand new kidneys in him. Wow. Comes to a 9 a.m. service every Sunday at Peckville, wears a cowboy hat. Amen. That's how you know he's anointed. Nice boots, too. You're right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? Because you don't have to live like everybody else lives. 
You serve God. You're a child of God. Y'all got me messed up on this when you're singing. You're a child of God. Hear me. Your life doesn't have to look like everybody else's. Your life should look like you have a redeemer. I said it should look like you have a redeemer. Hallelujah. You can do anything. I said you can do anything. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do anything. And if they do, just do it twice as hard. That's what I do. You know why? Because the devil's the one who invokes doubt and unbelief in people. You can't do that. You're in Honesdale. You're right, I'm in Honesdale. And I'll see the blessing of God get poured out in Honesdale. All week long, I had preachers coming to me from all over this country, didn't I? I can't believe what God's doing in Honesdale. I, I, can't, I can't believe how God's poured it out there. Right? You know why? Because God alone will get the glory for something. But God will use somebody in the middle of nowhere, hear me, no offense, and put his blessing upon something, and it will catch the attention of other people. It will catch the attention of other people. Look at how many people have gotten healed in this building. How many people have laid hands on miracles have taken place? Now, most people go to church their whole life and never see one miracle. Well, God sovereignly does them. Yeah, he did it through the personal work of Jesus Christ. And he said, it is finished. Yeah. By his stripes, you were healed. That's past tense. I don't have to wonder if God's going to do it or not. He already did. Yeah. Getting quiet now. Consistency breeds victory. Amen? Amen. Whew, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. You don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your habits. That's from Atomic Habits. You don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your habits. Getting quiet now. Your consistency in your holy habits will lead to explosive growth. I said it will lead to explosive growth. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Do not let this word depart from thine eyes or out of thy mouth. For when you meditate in it day and night, then you'll have great success and prosper in everything you do. Most people just like the next verse. Be strong and courageous. Right, which comes from the Word. It comes from your holy habits. That's how you get strong and courageous. Amen? Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. I want to talk to you a little bit tonight on the Sabbath because there's all kinds of crap teaching going around about it out there. So I want to clear the air a little bit. Is that all right? Might as well say, yeah, because I've already offended everything else I could in the room. <laughs> I love it. I, I, had, I had a pastor call me the other day. And they, they want to come here with like 50 or 60 other ministers to find out what the secret sauce is. You know what I told them? I said, I'm having more fun pastoring this church than I've ever had in my life. I, I mean that. More than traveling, more than doing anything. I'm having more fun being in Honesdale on Sunday night. I said, you want the secret sauce? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pray, preach, prophesy. Yeah. He said, we'd like to come there and do a panel. I said, that's great. I can give you as much bad information as you'd like. <laughs> he laughed. I said, let me help you. My services are long. I speak in tongues on the microphone. I demonstrate the power of God. I have no, you know, I'm not worried about receiving an offering. Have no problem teaching on the offering. I do everything wrong according to church growth models. So it would have to be God. Yeah. I just heard a, a mega church pastor say, well, you could have church growth or you can have the Holy Ghost, but you can't have both. Wow. Yeah. And now it's, I think it's been a week and a half. And so much bad garbage has come out of there. And a man's going, shh. Because God will not be mocked. And I'm here to tell you, the days of fake church is over with. Fake everything is over with. And I believe just what we've seen in this country has been a shaking, but there's more to come. Because people's eyes are getting, oh, oh man, I feel this. People's eyes are getting open. Things are getting revealed. That's political. No, it's truthful. Back to the Sabbath, Tyler. <laughs> Man, I feel like letting it rip. Whew. 
Hallelujah. I'm t- God is my witness. Everything that can be exposed will be exposed in Jesus' name. From the White House all the way down. Take it for what it's worth. If anything, the last three years has, should have opened people's eyes to how much propaganda and garbage is out there from a lying antichrist spirit that's trying to push this world into a one world economics. I just feel it. I'm going to say it. In a one world currency and a one world government. What do you think that is? That's the antichrist spirit trying to usher that stuff in. Yeah. It's not political. That's truthful. Yeah. And read the Bible. That's what's going to happen anyhow. But I'm telling you right now, before all that crap takes place, I believe and I believe in God that he's going to send one more great move of God to this country one more time. I can feel it in my spirit. I can feel it in my bones. Exodus 20. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. Uh Uh-oh. Now, when I was in Israel, the Jewish people take this to a way far extreme. Like we get in in the uh, elevator, they won't even touch the buttons. This is before COVID even existed. Amen. This includes you. Your sons, your daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigners living among you. You know, it just made me think of something. I I gave you that scripture before out of Genesis 28 about Jacob. And I made a comment about God not making money rain from the sky. God will bless the work of your hands. In fact, God blessed Jacob, and he became a cattle rancher. Y'all figure that out later. For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them, but on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. As holy. Let me help you. If God needed a Sabbath and Jesus needed a Sabbath, you need a Sabbath too. Well, I'd like to go to church. I'm just too tired. Come on. Well, we like to sleep in on Sunday. Good, then you can come Sunday night. <laughs> sleep in all you want. Get here by 6.30, amen. And if you're sleeping until 6.30, you got bigger problems. A.M. <laughs> or P.M., amen. <laughs> How about Exodus 31, 14? He says, observe the Sabbath because it's holy to you. Now, in Exodus 20, he commands us to remember the Sabbath. But in Exodus 31, he tells us to observe it or keep it. There's a difference. Hello, he commands us to remember it, but then now he says, wait a minute, now you need to keep it. Oh, man. Sabbath has a dual purpose. It's not only stopping, but it's to delight in something. Oh, I'm going here. Do the research for yourself. Sabbath is a dual purpose. It's not only to rest in something, but it's to delight in something. Yeah, Sundays we rest by going to church. You guys are here. You can say amen. amen. It's the people out there that need to get their butts kicked. Amen. On Sundays, we rest by going to church. But watch this. It's not only a resting, but it's coming in and delighting in the Lord's presence. It's I'm coming to God's house to get fueled up for the week. Because I realize those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their... Yeah. Oh, I'm going to help you here a minute. Sabbath is a dual purpose. Yes, we rest, but it's to delight in God. It's to say, God, wait a minute, I believe the week starts on Sunday, so I'm coming here, God, and I'm giving you my time. I'm coming here, God, I'm going to give you my talent. I'm coming, God, I'm going to bring my treasure to you too, God. I'm delighting in you, God. I'm delighting in your presence. I'm remembering the Sabbath. I'm keeping it holy, and I'm starting my week right. Because when I do this right, everything else, oh, come on. Because when I seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all this other stuff gets added unto me. we got to get this thing straight again. Barno's latest, uh, latest research says that people who call themselves regular members of churches, one out of every six. In other words, they go to church one out of every six Sundays. Not here. I said not here. But I'll be honest with you. The people that come here to thrive, if everybody showed up on one Sunday who come here throughout the course of a month, we'd pack this back there in the building across the street. That's what I want. You know why? Because there's people going, wait a minute, God. 
is holy unto you. Not only did you command us to do it, God, but you told us to keep that thing, too. If you want God's blessing, you got to do it God's way. Oh, come on. Well, I don't like organized religion. Neither do I. This is an organized religion. You think it's organized religion, boy, I'll send you some places you can see organized religion. This is, I'm coming to God's house to encounter God. I'm coming to meet with God. Come on, say amen. When we stop, we rest, we reflect, and delight in God, our desire for him is awakened within us. Oh, man. When we stop, we rest, we reflect, and delight in God, our desire for him is awakened within us. Why do you think the devil wants to keep you out of God's house? Right. He could separate you. Jesus said to Peter, Peter, I pray your faith wouldn't fail, for Satan hath desired to sift you like wheat. I like to get to church like, you know, once every couple months. I told that girl I prayed for last week, honey, we're here more than Christmas and Easter. Amen. I wasn't being rude. I'm being truthful. A lot of people think, well, I go to church Christmas. I go to Easter. I check the God's box. The Christers. No. Jesus said those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. You know how much church I was in this week? Every day and every night. Do you think I have long services? Go to West Virginia. Right? All I did was eat, sleep, and go to church. And I said, Lord, I'm okay with this. Whew. Hallelujah. I'm with my crowd. Number one tonight, you and I need to practice the Sabbath once a week. Once a week. We need to hit the pause button once a week and say, I'm coming to God's house, and I'm going to delight myself in the Lord. I'd like to get there. No, no, get your butt here. You know what I find about funny people say stuff like that? Well, I'd like to get there. They got no problem getting to work every day. Billy Graham used to say, show me your checkbook, and I'll show you where your heart is. Well, I'd like to get there, but I have work tomorrow morning. Don't we all? Come on. You want to come ride the garbage truck at 4.30 in the morning? I don't, hey, I don't want any excuses. This is God's house. This is holy unto God. I know this isn't the type of stuff you preach to fill your church with, but I'm telling you right now, someday I'll give an account before God. And the Bible says the fires of hell are stoked seven times as hot for those that are teachers of the word. That's why I teach the whole thing. I don't pat people on it. You know, I kind of like insult humor anyway. But I, I'm not one to pat people on the back. I'm more of a Don Rickles type. Amen. Insults all around. No, I'm teasing. Kind of. But I, I, I couldn't call myself a preacher of the gospel if I didn't give you the whole counsel of God's word. And folks, we've created a culture that people don't go to church. And then forget it, what Fauci and friends did. Stay home and worship on YouTube, worship on Facebook, worship on what? No, get your butt in the house of God. I don't think I'm going to go to work tomorrow, brother. I'm just going to watch from YouTube. Let me know how that goes for you. There's going to be fire in your rear. Well, I just don't feel like it. I didn't ask how you felt. What does the word say? In fact, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, to not forsake the gathering of the brethren together as the day quickly approaches. Hello. Just give us a cupcake. Get your cupcakes on the way home. Amen. I'll give you the word of God. Mark chapter 2 and verse 27 and 28. Then Jesus said to them, the Sabbath, watch this, was made to meet the needs of people. Oh, man. I, this jumped out at me this week. The Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people and not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. I can park right there and preach. Wait a minute. God instituted this thing for your needs to get met, not his. God instituted this thing so you would come to God's house, watch this, and get in his presence, and then things could change. Well, brother, the church is everywhere. Yeah, it is. But hear me. There's something to be said about the corporate body of Christ coming together with one mind and one spirit, one accord, and say, you know what? We're coming together and believe in God. We're joining our faith together. Say amen. We're putting our faith together in this place. Believe in God. You know why things were easy all week in West Virginia? 
Because as people coming together, they're believing God for miracles. With the same spirit of faith, there was no convincing anybody. People just stepping in the room going, oh, no, I believe God's going to do that. That's what I want with this church. Amen. I don't want creasters. I want people to come and say, God, I believe those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. I don't want to play church. I don't want to play denomination. I don't want to play any bull crap. I want the word of God. I want to see people changed by the power of God's spirit. I want to see people healed and raised up in faith, baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Not some limp wristed Christianity that we've created in this country. And shame on the preachers for not having the intestinal fortitude to teach people what the word actually says or to call people to repentance or to lay hands on the sick. Yeah. Same preachers walking around masks and gloves on. Never wore a mask a day in my life. I got booted out of the gym for not wearing one. Amen. All you need to wear a mask is for your health. My health's fine. Amen. I got a good plan. It's called the Holy Ghost. You should try it sometime. Ask Rick. You know masks around here? I see you really want to cover this? They laughed too right before they kicked me out. Amen. <laughs> Most people's lives are filled with restless, restlessness instead of restfulness. You know why? Because they don't come to God's house. It's a holy habit. Now faith comes by hearing, that by singing my favorite K-Love song. No. Faith comes by hearing, that by hearing the word of God. There's something to be said. I don't have the time to teach on it tonight about the proximity of the anointing. Oh, man. There's something to be said about the proximity of the anointing. I'm not saying God can't touch you wherever you are, but there's something about being in the house. Whew. Number two tonight, very quickly. The difference between a day off and a Sabbath is rest and worship. See, this needs to be taught because people go, well, Sabbath is just a day off, brother. No, a day off is a day off. Don't try and church it up by putting lipstick on a pig. The difference between a day off and a Sabbath is rest and worship. Well, I'm practicing my Sabbath by sleeping until noon and then binge watching Netflix and then ordering Domino's at 2 in the morning. That's not a Sabbath. It's a day off. A lazy one, but whatever you want to call it. I... Believe it or not, I have trouble sitting still. I know, hard to believe. <laughs> Even on a day off, if one existed, I couldn't sit still. I, I can't imagine these people that don't work. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to lay around all week, sponge off the government. I, <laughs> I, I better not, because I, I go to, you can draw the lines. That's why socialism is of the devil. God's not a socialist. Look at what it's done to every nation that's followed it. It's part of the Antichrist spirit. I probably should have just taught on the Antichrist spirit tonight and the way I'm going with this thing. <laughs> Let me hear you. Some people need a day off, but it's not a day off that you need. You need a Sabbath. I'm just so tired. You need to come into his presence and come into his house and say, God, I believe that as I wait on you, Strength will arise. God, I believe as I make a commitment. Come on, give God some praise. I, I read this the other day. It says, we have become perhaps the most emotionally exhausted, psychologically overworked, spiritually malnourished people in history. Thanks to social media. Sorry, I added that part. But Isaiah chapter 40 says, but those who wait upon the Lord Amen. shall renew their strength. Amen. I'd like to come. I'm just so tired. Get untired. You know how tired I am coming up here on Sunday nights? Ask Rick. Last Sunday night I preached, went home, got up at 4 a.m. to go to work, worked all day, went to the gym, waited on Elisha <laughs> to go to his girlfriend's sister's track meet or something. It's a whole different conversation. <laughs> and at 8.30 at night, packed up my kids, my family, and these guys in the car and drove seven hours to West Virginia. Got into bed about 3 in the morning. I was up for about a day at that point, only to get up 
start next day and go right into meetings. Was I tired? Yeah. But man, from the time that first song started, and y'all know how I love that old camp meeting stuff. <laughs> Singing that song, When I Die, Let Me Die Speaking in Tongues. Let it ring in my ears, all those songs that I've sung. Give me strength to praise him. Speak your name one more time. Whew. Hallelujah. A new strength comes upon you. The Holy Spirit gets in. Come on, say amen. It starts filling you up to overflowing. Something starts moving, amen? West Virginia, it's like a track meet takes off. <laughs> That's a whole different discussion. That's wild cost, amen? So what renews your strength? Rest. And worship. It's not an event of worship. It's a lifestyle of worship. Amen. Oh, come on. Can I tell you something? The only day that God called holy or blessed was a day of rest. I didn't hear him say, Mondays are holy. No, he said the Sabbath is holy. Whew. Man, this is... We'll speed it right along here. Number three, God commanded the Sabbath, He blessed it, and He called it holy. God commanded the Sabbath, He blessed it, and He called it holy. Well, I'd like to come to church sometime, but I'm just so busy. I don't have the time. Last I checked, you got the same amount of time as everybody else. I don't know why I feel like hitting this tonight, but this is what the Lord put in my spirit. It's not, I'm not shooting at anybody, believe me. But I believe, especially all the hell we went through the last three years, that somebody's got to stand up and say, wait a minute, they're wrong. You belong in corporate worship. Amen. It's just like when Brother Fauci, that lion rat, said, <laughs> remember this one? Okay, you guys can gather again, but no singing. Remember that? Why? Because the devil's trying to silence your praise. You get together, but there's no singing. You could chant quiet. What are we? You guys saved that crap for Bohemian Grove. Sorry. Ridiculous is what it was. A bunch of filthy lies. You know what to do? To try and divide people. To try and separate people. Well, brother, uh, no, 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 let me tell you right now. The truth of this is that the devil has a plan to divide, but it's God's will for you to come and say, wait a minute, the Sabbath is holy. I'm getting to his house. I'm going to corporately worship him together. <laughs> Genesis chapter 2. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. Somebody say amen. amen. Aren't you grateful God finishes what he starts? like some of y'all's husbands or wives or whatever. Amen. God finishes what he starts. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that what he had done. Number four, lastly, you must break the cycle of accumulation and accomplishment. Whew, I'm going to show you something here because there's a balance. I said there's a balance. Six days, work your tail off. But on the seventh days, wait a minute, God, I'm breaking the cycle of the six days. Oh, come on. I'm going to get to your house. I'm going to honor you with everything. And I believe, God, that you'll give me, as I give you time, as I give you talent, as I give you treasure, you're going to return to me. Yes. And my next six days, I'll be able to run stronger than I was even the last six. Come on. It's the principle of seed time and harvest. Uh, this stuff I'm preaching tonight, you get this in your spirit. I'm telling you, everything will begin to change. Yep. Ask Rick. He, thank God he drives me, amen? Sometimes I get drunk, and I'm driving home, and thank God he's driving, amen? I mean, on Sunday nights in service. Where are you all going with this? <laughs> get filled up on the Holy Ghost. Ask Rick. I'm so done when service is over with. I thank God that man picks me up and drives me. I'm telling you. And I just sit there in a passenger seat. A lot of times you ask him, we're on the ride home. Just thanking God. Thank you, Lord. We got a plane today. Ask him. I just start praying in the Holy Ghost, thanking God. God, you've been so good to us. God, look at these children, how blessed we are. Father, you've been so great. Oh, God, I thank you for redeeming the time. 
God, I thank you for allowing me to be at Honesdale tonight. God, I thank you for the blessing it is to be here. God, I, watch this. And your attitude begins to change to an attitude of gratitude. Hear me. Now you're doing things God's way. Hear me. And now the blessing of God can just... The blessing of God can just flow. I hear people all the time, I love to come on Sunday, but I got to work. No, no, work in your six days. Honor God on the seventh day and watch how he doesn't bless you. Watch he don't bless your six days better than you ever could do in seven. Everything in the kingdom of God is upside down. Give and it'll be given unto you. What? No, 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 God, you don't know what you're talking about. God, how am I going to do more with 90 than I would with 100%? Give, it'll be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. God will cause men to give into your bosom. I said that humbly. I didn't know somebody was going to write that kind of check this week. Call me out and five other ministers. Four other. I was the fifth. I said, I'm giving $100,000 to y'all today. Oh, but this giving thing doesn't work. Yeah. Seed time and harvest doesn't work. When you honor God with everything and do things God's way, hear me, then you're operating with the Spirit. With the Spirit of God. You're flowing with the Spirit of God. Hear me. And when you're flowing with the Spirit of God and the blessing of God is behind you, it doesn't matter how you set your sails, but the wind of the Holy Ghost blows into it. And He'll bless you coming in and bless you going out. You'll be blessed in the field and blessed in the sea. A lot of people like quoting that, but they don't like doing their end of it. I didn't think this would be a shouting message tonight. Six days, work with everything you have, but on the seventh day, it's time to break the cycle by coming to his house and worshiping him. It's, wait a minute, Lord. I was able to do what I did this week because of you. Come on. God, I have what I have because of you. It's all because of you. God, I come to your house out of respect and honor for you. You know, that's one thing I love about the Italians. If they love you, they really love you. If they don't, it's a different story. You know what I'm saying? Watch this. But they have honor and respect. Come on. Especially their relationships. You don't mess with somebody tied in with the Italians. You're going to have a whole bunch of them on your back. Come on. Why? Because they respect and honor each other. You know where that principle comes from? God. He created us to respect and honor Him. To respect and honor one another. To have each other's backs. Go practical for a minute. To have each other's backs. Well, we're Assembly of God. Well, we're Baptists. We're Methodists. We're whatever. No, it's all a bunch of crap. Sorry. No, I'm not. I'm not sorry at all. No, you're God's child. Amen. You're supposed to live in harmony and relationship together. And let me help you. Every movement, and my friend who's a pastor here could back this up. Every movement that's been started, the Methodists, it was birthed in revival. The Presbyterians, birthed in revival. Pick one. Birth in revival. Look at it today. I'm not shooting, I'm being straight. Why? Because we're not doing it God's way. What was started with God's fire has now burned out. I don't want to burn out. I want to do what God's called me to do. And I'm not going to let any man take the glory for it. I'm not going to let any man put their hands on it. Sure as heck ain't going to let anybody else dictate anything. I want to stay in flow with God's spirit. How do I do it? By doing it God's way. By doing it God's way. How you do it? By having holy habits, doing it God's way. You know why you need to come to church every week? And if it's not this church, fine. But you need to be in church on the Sabbath. Do I think it should be this church? Yeah. You know why? Because you're going to get the whole thing here. I can't speak for how other people steward things. I'll give an account for myself. That's why people say, you know what they're doing at the other church? No. I frankly don't care. That's rude. No, it's not. It's I'm running my own race. Oh, man. I think people need to come together. I said come together. I could hear the crickets. <laughs> Brother Jim, I hear the crickets. Amen. I 
I just want to see God move. I was sitting in Brother Ted's house the other day. Him and I were sitting out in what we call the cowboy room. Guns hanging, amen. Big John Wayne poster on the wall. Brother Ted and I were sitting there talking. Carolyn was in the other room with Sister Bonnie, and the boys were outside watching the kids. I said, Brother Ted, I'm so grateful to God for what he's done in and through us. I really am. I'm humbled by all that God has done. But I have this dissatisfied satisfaction. Does that make sense? I said, I just want to see God explode. I don't want religion. Well, I built a church. No, no, no. I want God to build a work. I saw some people get healed. Wonderful. I want everybody to get healed. I, saw people get blessed. I want everybody to get blessed. I'm dissatisfied satisfaction because I just want to see people experience God and know God the way we've gotten to know him, and the way we've gotten to experience him. And I'm like, man, if you could just taste this thing. Yeah. And then it hit me. And I asked the Lord, I said, God, why have we experienced some of your goodness here in Holmesdale? Like, on other. Why? Scripture came up. If you're willing and obedient, you'll need to go to the land. Watch what God said to me. I tell you, this blew my spirit out. A lot of people are obedient. Many aren't willing. He said, in fact, preachers have harped on for a long time on the obedience piece and not on the willing piece. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. That was worth the price of admission. And as I sat there in his home, West Virginia, I felt the anointing just drop in my spirit. That's the key. That's the key. Got some wonderful words about this church, about the future of this ministry. And what God has already done, we're going to continue to do, continue to expand and build and grow. And he'll get all the glory for it. Amen. But I just want to see God's spirit poured out in the lives of his children. Not play church. Not check the God box. Like really, really, really experience God. Worship team, you can come back. I'm done. Well done with preaching anyway. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. First Kings 19. You see, what, you know what's funny? Is I don't even have to preach a message about it to get people shouting. I can preach you tough things, and I feel the Spirit move up within me. And could just move into gifts. With ease. <laughs> With ease. I got all kinds of people wondering, how do you do that? Do it in God's way. I promise you. I don't do anything I was taught in Bible school. Sorry if you're watching from Bible school. <laughs> Big fat F on the report card. Amen. <laughs> have a 45-minute service. Look at We have church on Sunday night, which in America they said Sunday nights are dead. They haven't been to Honesdale. <laughs> Services are long. What do you think heaven's going to be like? <laughs> well, I hope the services are 45 minutes in heaven. You picked the wrong destination. Amen. <laughs> it's w <laughs> forever. Eternity. And if you miss it, you miss it. Like Jesus preached the Sermon on the Mount, right? If you weren't there, guess what? There was no, we're having a second service an hour from now. <laughs> it was over with. <laughs> I strongly dislike two services, sorry, or any multiple service thing. I'd rather slam everybody together and have one Holy Ghost blowout. <laughs> First Kings 19. Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree. What's a broom tree? I don't know. Amen. Take your word for it. Thought I knew? I don't know what a broom tree is. Amen. I had a, a brother come in one night. He said, where's my wife Parker Broom? I thought, oh. 
It's going to be a tough one, brother. Amen. I said, here's my friend Ed. He'll help you with counseling. Amen. <laughs> then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, arise and eat. You know what I love about God? He must have been Pentecostal because they're always eating. Amen. Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. Now, wait a minute. I'm taking a nap under a tree. An angel wakes me up. And, oh, my Lord, there's a cake. Shabbatikura. Hallelujah. Amen. And a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back a second time. Everybody say a second time. And touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. In your own strength, hear me, you're burning yourself out. I love you enough to tell you the truth. You're wearing yourself out. Have I perfected this? No. But I'll tell you right now, you ask that wonderful man that drives me here. When I take this microphone, the anointing of God comes over me. And there's a new strength that comes upon me. I'm telling you right now, and I can preach for, till the cows come home. Yeah. Knowing I got to get up tomorrow. Knowing whatever, but when the anointing of God comes on me, I pour out everything I have. And I'm tired. Right? When I'm done, I'm done. He pulls off the sheets. We get something to eat. Amen. God put that sheets there just for me. In Jesus' name. He takes me home. And then a lot of nights, I'm up half the night because the anointing is just heavy on me. Not like, oh, out of fear, anxiety. No, like, I'm just up thinking, God, God, I thank you. You healed folks tonight. God, I thank you for the way you showed up tonight. I thank you, God, as we honored you, we kept the Sabbath holy. You honored your people tonight. God, that you poured out your spirit tonight. God, I thank you for giving people dreams, inventions, business ideas tonight. God, I thank you that you're raising up people in the church that are able to fund the end time work. Arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank. And he went in the strength of that food 40 days, 40 nights, as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. The word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? I believe God's saying some things to his children tonight. said, what are you doing? All you folks not coming to his house, what are you doing? You're doing it in your own strength. Let me help you. In your strength, the journey's too great for you. In your own money, it's not enough for you. Your own job will never be enough. But when the blessing of God whew, comes upon you, I'm telling you, Sabbath rest will give you strength for your journey. Sabbath rest will give you strength for your journey. I declare and decree to you, lift your hands, everybody in this place, that as you honor God by keeping the Sabbath holy, by coming to his house, that there'll be strength that comes upon you. I said a new strength that comes upon you. That things will get better and better. You'll get stronger and stronger day by day. Just like the Bible said in Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 9. Like his word was like a fire shut up in my bones. Couldn't contain it. Couldn't contain it. Because when the blessing of God comes upon you, he said you won't have room to contain Oh man, I wish I had the time. The blessing of God comes upon you. You won't have room to contain it. You'll have too much strength. You know what happens if you got too much strength? You go looking to punch the devil in the face. Look at Samson. He's looking for a fight. Strength of spirit come upon him. He says, man, find me a bear. Find me a lion. Give me them foxes. I'm going to tie all their tails together and kick their tail. God, give me your strength one more time. And even though I can't see... Naturally, by the eyes of the Spirit, I'm going to 
but take one pillar in his hand. Take one pillar in his hand. And I believe as your strength comes upon me, I'm going to do more damage to the devil than I've ever done before in Jesus' name. I'm going to do more damage to hell than I've ever done before in Jesus' name. Every demon in this town is messing their pants every time this church gets together. I'm telling you right now. God is doing something through this. It has nothing to do with me. I'm talking about him now. He's doing something through this house. I'm telling you right now, every foul spirit of depression goes running. Foul spirits of anxiety, infirmity, antichrist spirits, because I got no problem talking about that either, goes running out the door. Why do you think they tried to hold us up from ever being able to move in this building or having a church? There was one man told me over, he said, you'll do it over my dead body. I said, I wouldn't do that if I was you. He said, oh, are you mafia? I said, no. Well, you don't want to mess with my boss. He died. No. Blame COVID. No, you tried to withhold God's church from being built. No man will stand in the way of God's work. I'm telling you, I live this thing. Ask the people that hang around me. Day in, day out. He really is a real God. There really is a real heaven. There really is a real hell. And when you draw your final breath, you go one or two places. Man, I feel the anointing. I'm telling you right now. Hallelujah. you were just teaching tonight. No, I was putting something in your spirit that if you'll honor God with that thing. The same people tell me, I can't go to church. Then football season comes around. They'll strap a fake construction helmet to their head with a Bud Light on either side of it. Notice I said Bud Light in light of recent things. Paint their chest red and blue like a buffoon and scream and shout at a guy on a TV who doesn't know your name, never cares to know your name, or even better yet, the same people tell me, I'd like to tithe, Pastor, but I only make 30 grand a year. But they'll go to five football games a year at $700 a ticket. Well, I'd like to tithe, I just don't have the money. You got money for $12 Bud Lights and that stupid helmet with a sucker on each side of it money to paint your chest red and blue no you do have it you're just serving football not God I'm not anti-football I like the Steelers amen but I'll never sit home from church to watch a Steelers game or Yankees game or anything else why because he said on the Sabbath it's holy to me need to be in God's house I said we need to be in God's house every head bowed every eye closed I didn't fly here from Pittsburgh to not bring you the word of the Lord. Amen. Could have shacked myself up in a nice hotel there for the night and been all right. But I know that I've come here, and every time I come to this town, it's on assignment from God himself. Because years ago when I rode by this place and broke out in tongues on my Harley, God dropped in my spirit what he was going to do with this place. I had the guy as the head of the Assemblies of God come to me, what do you think about Honesdale? I said, it's a dump, meaning this building. I said, it looks like God's the God of the ghetto. He's homeless living under a bridge somewhere. I said, it's never God's intention for his house. Little did I know God was setting me up. He's got a funny way of doing that. And then I realized, Paul, when I rode by and broke out in that message in tongues on my motorcycle, that God was dropping in my spirit what he wanted to pour out through this place. And I won't go into details how God moved heaven and earth, but here we are, literally. I won't go into details about what God showed me, what's next for this place. But we will be expanding, to say the least. God's going to give me the property I want 
and the buildings I want, the things I want to do. Because he said, everywhere the sole of my feet would tread, did I possess the land. Now, your little brain not might be able to do that, but God can do anything. If God could take me from flying next to the hopper in the back of a plane to fly my own plane, God can do anything. I do it to rub it in the face of the devil. And all the religious people said, I can't do that. Preachers aren't supposed to do that, but playboys and pimps can. Be a cold day and you know where, where you know who's sucking on a snow cone. For some religious devil dictates to me what I do and don't do. There really is a real God, there really is a real heaven, there really is a real hell. You cast the vote. He said, Deuteronomy chapter 30, I've set before you life and death, blessing and the cursing, oh, that you would choose life. I'm asking you to pray this prayer after me, but you must mean it out of your heart. In faith, say, dear Jesus. Come on, dear Jesus. Tonight, I confess you as Lord and Savior. I trade my sin for your salvation. I receive you as Lord and Savior. Heaven is my home. And when I die, I'll spend eternity with you. Father, fill me with the Holy Ghost and fire. Father, use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody give God a mighty hand of praise. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I don't know if I've ever told you this, but I sincerely mean this. Thank you for everything you've done. All your years of sowing. The Bible says, one plants, another waters. Lord brings the increase. From the first time I was in your home, I felt the Lord speak to my spirit. Then I come up there tonight of worship with Rick. Whew. As soon as I walked in your kitchen, the Lord spoke to me about our friends here and some other things. And I was so blown away by the goodness of God. And I hope you both know, I don't ever take for granted or lightly all your years of sowing. And on behalf of whatever, Honesdale, Tyler Hill, Conchecton, all around, thank you. I mean that. And I hope you know I honor you folks, appreciate you folks, your work, your fellowship. And God didn't bring us together by mistake bit of a maverick, so they say. Whew, hallelujah. Whew, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. But I appreciate you both very much. Long time kingdom work. Whew, hallelujah. Wonderful people. Have a fellowship. Come here on Sunday night and get filled up. It's always great to know you have people. The Bible calls them precious like faith in the house. Hallelujah. Whew. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Whew. What are you doing? Just waiting on the Lord a minute. I didn't know you were going to be here tonight. I hoped you were, but I didn't know you were going to be here. But I believe tonight what I preached was a confirmation for you. In fact, I believe there's even other people that have recently said to you about reading your Bible again, getting back to church, things of that nature. Now, I won't embarrass you, 
but pretty accurate. Yeah, because God knows everything. Amen. I don't know if the Lord said this to me or maybe Rick said it. I don't remember, honestly. Sometimes I get so caught up with things. Honest to God. Hallelujah. Something about a different job. Does that make sense to you? You'd like to do something different. Right? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Pretty good so far. And I haven't even seen you in a minute. Hallelujah. Get you out there hitting a the softball in a couple of months. Praise God. Whew. The Bible says this. It says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. The Sabbath thing that I talked about, about coming to church, but also delighting in the Lord. Whew. And then God will grant you the desires of your heart. Put your hand right here if you would. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I thank you for my wonderful friend, God. Father, I pray, God, as he delights himself in you, as he honors the Sabbath, Lord, that you'll give him the desires of his heart. Whew. Hallelujah.